Hey, welcome back to Mobility Wad. We are going to try to get you to think differently about the Open. So the Open is upon us, Open season, which gives us six weeks to reset our thinking a little bit. Now, we've traditionally in the past, we have talked about using the Open, of course, as a diagnostic. You can gamify it. We'll talk about that in a second. But, you know, really this is a perfect chance to say, hey, look, I, I'm going to play. I have been scrimmaging a lot, and now I'm going to go and put myself into a competition. And if you were in the NFL, for example, not only have we filmed every single snap, but we should be looking at ourselves under intense pressures that sometimes we don't get in the gym under some of these fundamental movement patterns and be able to assess our ability to maintain shape and look at when we start to fatigue and start to think about critically start to think critically about sort of our own deficiencies. And it's important that I'm advocating for you to actually film your workouts even if you're not going to uh, submit them or you're not a, a professional uh, CrossFit athlete. It's a good idea to start to get an image of under high pressure and high competitive drive what happens to your to your competitiveness, what happens to the robustness of your shapes and position. So homework number one, film all of these workouts and then in painstaking detail, look at rep after rep after rep. Assess, is my back flat? Did I have a good setup? Did I lose position? Did I see knee wobbles? And we really want us to think critically about this and this is an excellent time to assess our own competencies in a slightly different situation because if you've been crossfitting for a while, it's very easy for this to suddenly feel like step aerobics with weights, right? You know all the steps, you know how many double unders you can do in 30 seconds, you know how many calories you can row. The, the quantities are slightly known and the, the, the metabolic demand is known, but suddenly the open comes around and it gives us a fresh light on trying to understand ourselves. And remember, this is the goal. The goal is to, you know, sometimes say, hey, like right in the middle of a game of rugby, for example, if I see guys rounding their backs in the scrum, right, lining up without good mechanics, that's not necessarily the place to, to fix it, but it is the place to understand that it's happening. And what we want you to do is treat this very much like a test. Do your best, remain in safe positions, of course, always, comma. When you start to see that efficiency, you start to throw your head back, being, hmm, what's going on there? So make a list of things that you would change after each workout. What would you do re over? One of the things that we do with our girls at night is we always go around and say, hey, what was the highlight of your day? What was something you would do over? This is your chance to say, if I could do that workout again, here are the things that I would change around my, my mechanics. Because remember, this is allegory for how we're gonna move through the rest of our world. Okay, so that's, that's what we're gonna want. Number two is that we wanna get you to think kind of beyond the open. One of the reasons I'm an advocate of the open is that it gives us a chance to have a competitive season when sometimes our lives don't uh, facilitate us being a regular competitive athlete. So you have a six week season culminating in a championship game six weeks from now. How are you gonna handle that? What's nice about that focus, right, about having something hanging over your head is that you're gonna have to be ready to perform on a specific day. That means that you need to be sort of organizing your week a little bit differently, your prep a little bit differently, and we can use that magnifying glass, we can use that concentration of attention and focus to look at some of the patterns that sometimes escape us from the day-to-day -day training because if I'm not living on a spreadsheet and responsible to a coach in a linear progression program or pro a program that expects me to hit certain numbers, because a lot of the programming is open and we don't have baselines all the time, then what ends up happening is that some of the inefficiencies of my environmental load, environmental stress, get lost in the mix because, yeah, you know, I had a few drinks last night, you know, it wasn't a big deal. But I tell you what, if you have a couple drinks and you notice that your heart function is trash the next morning from heart rate variability and your ability to hit the marks that your coach sets for you, then you start to see those correlations. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take the open and say, hey, look, how can we use the open to sort of use it as a competitive season to think critically about what are the other aspects of my life? So here's a few things that I want you guys to track for us. One is I want you to pay attention to your sleep. What you're gonna notice is that these are big central nervous system loads, big efforts, and you're going to see that if you had a bad workout or you had to travel or go, I want you to make a correlation between your performance and how much sleep you're getting. And that you know, should be about sleep quality and sleep hygiene. But in the first part, let's just make sure that you're being aware during this next six weeks of how much sleep you're getting. Are you running a sleep deficit by the time you actually do the workout on Friday or Saturday? Let's pay attention to that. And if you're one of those people 
people who have to travel, notice that correlation because remember, the open is a chance to find out aspects of myself that may remain blind to me under normal situations because we have a lot of athletes that travel, and I do a lot of traveling, and I show up and I train, and it's not heroic. But I, we're trying to be heroic, so let's pay attention to this. Two, what do you do the day before? So what we want you guys to do is, if this is a work day, right? Two days before the training event. So let's say I plan on doing the workout on Saturday. This is Friday. This is Thursday. The better thing to do is to not take Friday off if Saturday is my day, but to go ahead and touch those metabolic enzymes. Go ahead and get your heart rate up. Don't necessarily have to fatigue yourself, but go in there, touch your positions, do a little front squatting with the bar, get on the watt bike, make yourself feel vomitous, take yourself through a heart rate range after a big warm up, and let's put that in here. So I want you to work on the day before you're gonna compete. If you're gonna take a rest day off, do it a couple days before. So this would be a better position. What we see is that athletes who take a day off before, it's a little bit harder to get the diesel going than it is when to keep it idling and then just spark it, okay? That's a big deal. One of the other aspects around this is that I want you to pay attention to your warm up. Now, normally what's happening is that we see athletes, you know, you come to the gym, your coach warms you up, because we have the benefit of knowing that we're competing here, what we'd like our athletes to do is make sure that they're awake at least three hours, three hours plus before event. So if you're planning on eight, think backwards. What does that look like? What's an optimal time? If you can be awake three hours before your event, that's ideal. And what I want you to do is get up and go for a long walk, get hot and sweaty. If you can think about prepping your mechanics in the morning, if you're gonna compete in the afternoon, we'll see a better better job of being able to touch those missing corners. So, for example, what we do with our NFL athletes is on game day, we have them wake up, go for a long walk, go 45 minutes, easy, gets the tissues moving, gets them waking, right? And then we have them go back to their hotel, open up their joints, do what they need to do, then by the time it comes into the chaos and madness around the gym and around that competition moment, it's easy to just get my heart rate up, touch the movements and go. Because what we're thinking is, hey, sometimes on competition day, it's hard for me to get as much warm up as I want because there's a lot going on and I'm in an environment that I can't control. So if we can get you a few hours beforehand, warm, a full warm up, touching the joints, getting a little sweat going, what you'll find is that you're gonna be much better prepped. What we tend to do is we all freak out, I'll save my energy, save my energy, save my energy, and then I get a little pinche 10 or 12 minute warm up before I hit these huge efforts. Right? We know that they're probably not gonna be longer than 20 minutes, most of them are 12 to 15 minutes, so let's make sure that we are giving them our full due and spending a lot of time bringing the heart rate up uh, prior to doing that, okay? Last thing, or one of the initial things, is the cool down. Remember, you're in a six week competition. This isn't a world championship of the world event, right, where you, it's one and done, and you get to spend a whole off season recovering. You're thinking about, hey, I, I just blew myself out. What does Sunday look like? Well, it needs me, I need to be active. I need to be rowing, I need to do some long piece on Sunday, right? That cool down, we're gonna think of as for a couple days. Ideally, we would like to get some work done early in the week. So if this is Sunday and this is Monday, remember, I need to get some work done so that I can start tapering my efforts to get ready for this Saturday event, right? So if I'm trashed because I didn't warm down or cool down or move myself the day after because I'm so blown out, what you're gonna find is that early in the week, it's going to hurt you. So what we'd like you to do is think about being active, long, slow distance, go do a sport, go paddle, go swim. This is a perfect place to put in that recovery 5K or a long couple hour walk, open up your hips. Uh, Brian McKenzie, Power Speed Endurance, has some easy recovery workouts. Swing a kettlebell, get your heart rate up no matter what on this day. What we want you to do though is as soon as you're done with your competition, let's say that Saturday morning, you high five, you write your score down, and then you're gonna go for a walk, you're gonna go on the erg, you're gonna go on the assault bike, and I want you to spend 20 or 30 minutes there, not doing anything. So the idea is, hey, let's bring ourselves down and let's flush, and so make sure that we're recovered. Uh, what we find is sometimes that you're like high five, you're sweating, you gotta judge, and then you actually aren't 
recovering your central nervous system and your tissues appropriately. So it can make a huge difference if you can get that cool down. Remember, a cool down is for a couple days, right? I'm keeping the system going, but I want to shoot for a 20 minute minimum actual post training or post competition cool down. I want to I want to get myself moving and stay moving. It's a big mistake to hit these things. You're going to find intensities that you normally don't have. So suddenly you can start to build, oh, of course nutrition is going to be important in there, but what you're starting to see is that I want you to pay attention to some of the markers and see if you can do some, some back engineering into understanding what the heck is going on with your performance. Was it just technical? Was it just too strong? Or did you have a crap warm up, poor positions, high stress during work? This is a chance to sort of understand the hidden environmental loads on our persons as we compete. Again, your job, stay active the day before. Let's make sure that you get a big warm up in long before you can train. If you can do it as a separate session, that's even better. And then we're really gonna exaggerate this 20 minute cool down. I want you to film your workout sessions so that they're training in competition so you can actually go rep by rep and actually watch what happens because sometimes we can't really see what's going on or we don't get into the habit of filming ourselves and so we make a lot of crazy movement errors and things that we're just blind to until someone point, points them out. So we're gonna have you point them out. Now, because the Open is so sophisticated, we are very pleased this year, if you're an MWOD user, to introduce you to the training plan. And the training plan was, is the coaching platform by our good friend Yami Tikin. And Yami is an MWOD staff member. In fact, he's the original MWOD staff member. He runs MWOD Europe. He's a British osteo. He uh, is a phenomenal coach, the most technical master coach I know. And uh, he's trained some really good people for uh, the CrossFit Games and has probably, as any coach, has produced the highest number of podium. Um, podium finishes in all the CrossFit games. So he's the most accomplished coaching CrossFit athlete coach out there. Now what we've done this year is that Yami has been gracious enough, if you're a pro user, to give us his uh, PDF, which is his game plan and his action video. So since the, the announcement is today on Thursday, these things will come out from his staff and him on Friday and we'll post them as soon as we can. That sets you up for a strategy to break down strategies, tempo, timing, uh, partitioning, the whole thing. And if you're a serious games athlete, look at these things Saturday and Sunday. If your gym does it on Friday and you don't have a chance to watch, do absolutely watch and understand because you can see sort of the technical thinking behind this big effort and ways to sort of strategize it. They will certainly help you for the next time. So again, the plan, every Thursday we'll put up, um, I think Yami either puts it up uh, late on Thursday, a general community video which we'll share, but then if you're a pro user through MWOD, you're gonna have access to the training plan uh, model for how they brief their athletes. It's a lot of information and it's really, really technical and amazing. This is the best and greatest resource in the competitive CrossFit environment today. We're very, very stoked. All of our competitive CrossFit athletes at our gym here use the training plan and it's the best expression of taking mobility wad concepts, prep mechanics, and applying them to the sport of fitness. See you guys tomorrow.